welcome back to another dry and hopping Prairie Sunset Ranch farm vlog. Well, it might be hopping here at Prairie Sunset Ranch, but not for the good reason. Mostly because of the grasshoppers. <laughs> the grasshoppers have moved in and they are decimating all the crops. Hey crops, I don't care what you're growing, they're eating it. They are, are hungry and they are moving in in waves. The heat brought them on. Today's a little bit cooler, but we had a few days of 35 to 39 uh, Celsius of weather and it was hot. It was real dry. We got no rain with that. We haven't had rain since the last... I don't know how long ago. I try not to count, but it doesn't rain here anyways. <laughs> but with that said, we're going to go hook up the disc mower as you see here. I'll show you what I did to get the new Holland H6750 into working order. We actually hooked that onto the John Deere 6110. Um, I left the sides off. I'm gonna put the sides on. But uh, yeah, so we're using the 6110 with the disc mower this year. And uh, we're gonna go hook that up. We're gonna cut down some hay. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the hay and a little bit about the challenges associated with this dry, this drought weather. This will be the fourth year of drought we are going through and it's only getting worse it seems. So with that said, we have to adjust how we make hay. We don't just go out there cut it rake it up as usual this year there is so little sparse hay that basically what you see here cut is probably one windrow just about yeah i would say probably that one windrow we want to work the baler as little as possible so we want big windrows so what that means is no v-rake this year we're not using the v-rake the savima no out of service we are using the old nine wheel inline rake because we got lots of driving in circles to make an appropriate windrow. Me, personally, I believe in working the baler as little as possible, therefore having larger windrows to eat up. So uh, that's the route we're gonna take, but uh, that's enough chit chatter. Let's better, better, and get at her. Woo! Can you see that? Thousands upon thousands of grasshoppers. Just grasshoppers everywhere. Now, not, not that it's bad enough we have to deal with another severe drought. These fields are back to looking like they were before that rain. But not only that, the grasshoppers started just started working on it i just uh like this field's almost a complete write off i thought last year was a little bit rough it was nothing compared to this <laughs> now we're trying to figure out where do we cut first i think we're gonna cut the good fields near the house where the grasshoppers are destroying it we're gonna keep our fingers crossed for some rains and maybe a second crop we are already behind in haying at least two to three weeks for sure two weeks behind we would have been started up already well into a hang but you know basically a couple few videos ago we're back at the starting point the rain got us a little bit of growth and then it just stopped but we got to cut that down then we got to move in here we got to cut whatever's good our alfalfa fields we got to cut them real fast to get them off so these grasshoppers don't <laughs> decimate them because they are coming in hordes there are it's crazy millions in that other field it's crazy you're driving and they're just all over you and it's it's quite disturbing just when you think things can't get worse well if you're watching this prairie sunset ranch farm video you haven't hit that cute little thumbs up or that awesome subscribe button be a sweetie and hit all three well actually two but you can comment too so that'd be the trifecta <laughs> well this year can go one of one of a couple different ways one we have to get rid of cattle breeding stock now that is my worst case scenario uh, i'm very optimistic i'm usually a pretty positive person it's really hard to be positive during these times 
when you're worrying about the future of your farm and your cattle. So we've been working our butts off. We've been carrying over lots of animals. Uh, you know, you lose out on income when you carry over and you start growing your herd. And it's worked for us. Now we worked pretty hard to get up to where we are now. And with the land we cover, I never thought I'd have to worry about hay the way we are worrying now. Um, last year was okay. The year before that we had to buy hay. But this year, I, I, I just don't know if one can afford to buy hay. Not if it's 15 cents a pound. That's just, that's just too far out there. Anyways, let's go, uh, let's go ahead to the machine uh, shop there. Let's hook up the uh, baler. Let's take a peek at the tractors. Let's get the mower tuned in. Maybe we'll cut some hay yet. Look, it's going to be 18. So we're about 18 and a quarter off the ground. That's what we should be with the high, with the highest double guard uh, system. You need to be 24 to 26. So with the standard skid plates on it and the standard blades, about 18. So I go 18 and a quarter. That's what we'll put the limiting strap on at. There you have it. Turn that top three point. It might be too aggressive now, but <clears throat> it tilts the blades down. So now it's a better attack, attack angle. I might even do more than that. Gotta get every morsel of hay. So what I'm doing is I'm just checking all the oils. I just take it off with this. All the oils look really good. They look nice and clean. There's no filings. This is different, uh, it has separate hubs, oil baths in every one. So we got, you know, three, four, five, six, seven different turtles, all in different uh, oil baths. So I religiously check, check and change the oil in them. It's, uh, it's, it's cheap insurance. So anyways, the oils do look pretty good. I'm gonna check the rest of them here. And then we're just gonna zip off these uh, blades. I don't know. I might put on the serrated ones. The serrated ones seem to work really good. Um, coarse ground. Seems like they're kind of self sharpening. Uh, they're a lot more expensive, but I'm not sure which ones I'm gonna use. But uh, we're gonna zip off these old ones. Took a good look. Some of them are pretty beat up. So I don't even wanna sharpen that one. This one's getting worn away pretty bad. Eh, this one maybe could be kept, but. But yeah, we'll just finish this up and uh, we're going to go and try her out right away. So 14 new blades, um, oils are all perfectly clean, I changed them late last year. Uh, I'm just going to pull the gearbox oil, I'm going to grease up the points here and I'm going to take her for a test rip. We're going to go see if we can chop a little bit of short hay down. <laughs> first uh, dad's gone out to do the first official cut of drought 2021 here at PSR. So he's got the old New Holland 456 and the white 260. The old white's popping away again. So. Uh, April's gonna go uh, take you with the kiddos and watch the ceremonial first pass.
Throw it over. See your muscles, Hulk. Toss her. Woo! Good job. Show me your muscles. Oh, there she is. She's cutting pretty good. Considering there's not much hay to cut. But we're going to get out right away and check. Let's see exactly uh, how low I'm cutting. See, make sure the tack angle isn't too, uh, too aggressive. Boy, there's lots of grasshoppers. That is crazy. But this is looking really sparse. I haven't come up here yet on this highland, but as you can tell, there, <laughs> there's no big wind rows. You know, you're gonna be, yeah, we're probably gonna be putting nine, nine of these into one or 10. Uh, to one, one bale in a wind row. So not too good, not too good at all. Mower seems to be dialed in. It's cutting pretty short. There's where dad's sickle mower was. That's where mine is. I'd say mine's almost cutting shorter. But I don't want to be too aggressive. Because I don't want to smash up the turtles. I'll take a peek, see what it's doing in the front here. You know, it looks like it's just cutting good. So, we'll leave it be. Let's cut a little bit of hay down. But uh, yeah, there isn't much, there isn't much here. finished this field that field and the field in behind there so we have a grand total of about a um, hundred acres down so I don't know I don't know what to expect off this as you can tell the wind rows are <laughs> looking a little rough there isn't much hay there uh, it's very overcast today and it's not with clouds this is smoke from northern uh, Manitoba and Ontario, they have some forest fires going on there. So that's causing these clouds. But this is kind of what we have. So reason I cut this field first, it's pretty close to home. It's good, it's really good quality field hay. There isn't much of it, but you know, out of desperation, we're hoping for a second cut, second growth. I don't know, it's whatever. You know, if we don't take it, the grasshoppers are taking it. So yeah this is uh, a look at this big uh this big field here from basically that bush line to that bush line and then beyond that's just a little strip of bush and then it goes in behind there up to the next fence line which is probably another half mile so yeah we cut lots down yesterday uh cut a lot down sorry but are we gonna get anything from it i don't i don't know Stay tuned, I will let you know with my next video, once we rake it and bale it all up, I'll let you know what we get per acre. Um, and uh, I really won't have a good idea of what we're gonna pull off our fields this year until we do 
I say about three different fields from three different areas of our farm. I think the next one we're gonna move out south where the alfalfa, the two-year-old stands are, the two-year-old alfalfa grass. Uh, it looks a little better than this, but it, it's not great. It's just nothing's good. Nothing's good this year. <laughs> so, so this is basically, uh, you know, what can you do? I caught it pretty low. Um, and you're just gonna roll with the punches, do your best and, uh, and try to, uh, just give her, make as many bales as you can. You know, my goal this year would be, man, I think if I could make, um, 900 to, to 1300 bales, we're golden. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. That might be a far fetch from last year. I looked at the counter. There's 2039 on there, but that's with some straw bale too. So, um, Lots of grasshoppers. Whew, have they moved in hot and heavy? It is crazy. Again, very thin. There's a little bit, but uh, not, not. There should be a lot more. There should be four times as much. <laughs> but we'll see. There's a little mineral. It's thicker here where the canary is. Wish me luck, boys and girls. So I fertilized, I didn't fertilize this year. Um, fertilizer number one was, I think it was uh, 1280. I think it was 1,280 Canadian dollars per ton, which is just stupid. Like uh, for a hay crop, you really have to, for hay, you gotta do the math and you gotta figure out what you're gonna be getting back from that. Uh, number two, you gotta have the weather. Now, if you had the weather, is it worth the risk? Yeah, probably. You know, it's, it's definitely worth doing some key fertilizing at that point, but couldn't this year. I'm glad I didn't because it just wouldn't have paid off. That would have been money out the door, you know, that's if I spent 10 grand that I could have spent on a few bales if I need bales down the road or who knows, equip, equipment malfunction, whatever it may be. But these uh, these real dry years are, are tough to navigate through. Constant game, guessing game, chess game. You gotta move your pieces just right, and it just seems like you never do anything right. But it's it's out of your hands. It's it's not. You feel like it's your fault, but it's not. It's it's not your fault, you know. So if you're having a rough go at it, hey, I feel you. I hear you. We are there with you. If you're one of those poor guys or la ladies or guys, cowboys or cowgirls out in North Dakota. God bless you. Keep your, your chin up and just try to persevere if you can. Like, this is so stressful having no hay and having livestock. It's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. But we're going to hopefully try to pull off enough hay to, to not have to sell out uh, our herd or parts of our herd. Um, I don't know. We have some carryover, so I'm going to do a count. And I'll let you know what we have for carryover, but I think we have a few bales anywhere between uh, 250 to 500 bales. I'm not sure how much though. So we'll keep you posted in one of the upcoming videos. Well, it is hot out. Erin is just about calling her a day. So with that said, I am throwing in the towel. This is Erin signing off. We will see you next weekend with an all new Prairie Sensei Ranch farm vlog. Be there or be square, my friends. Bye for now. Have a great weekend.